Welcome back. We're going to continue with health insurance and the public care options. Uh, Medicare is the most important health care for individuals over the age of 65. Uh, as we saw in our last uh, video that uh, over 97% of Americans over the age of 65 is enrolled in Medicare. Um, the Medicare website is actually very informative, and um, if you, I encourage you, if you have needs or your friends and family have needs, to really go to the website uh, and get the information there directly instead of through third-party information. Um, so there are multiple parts to Medicare, and that can be a little bit confusing, but we're going to tackle that one by one in today's video. First is Part A. Medicare Part A covers inpatient care in hospital and nursing facilities, so including rehab and also home health care. So if you qualify for Medicare Part A coverage, um, some of them include um, in-home care, uh, a, 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 um, a health a, a healthcare aid um, at home in place of a nursing home. So that is an option that uh, is available through Medicare Part A. It is free if you or your spouse uh, have work uh, and pay Medicare taxes uh, for at least 10 years. So uh, we talk about the uh, Social Security tax and there's also the Medicare tax. So for a lot of U.S. working adults, we qualify for Medicare Part A uh, as part of our employment and tax so since we already pay tax, uh, Medicare tax for Part A, there's no cost for Part A. So, but you do have to enroll. So it's not automatic enrollment. You do have to enroll uh, in order to get uh, Part A benefit coverage. Uh, Part B um, is optional and it covers uh, other um, healthcare costs such as doctor's visits and also preventive care. You do have to pay premium on Part B, and it varies depending on your income level. You do need to choose to participate in Part B when you uh, enroll in Part A. If you don't choose to enroll in Part B when you sign up for Part A, later on you can get a penalty uh, when you want to sign up for Part B. So it's important to keep that in mind. Um, as a rule, of, uh, as a general rule, the uh, Medicare Part B premium is still cheaper compared to private health care insurance. So if you qualify for Part A, um, most individuals will sign up for both Part A and Part B at the same time, which is when right now is at age 65. You sign up for Medicare Part A and Part B through at the Social Security office. So this is, uh, pay close attention. So you sign up at the Social Security office and this is their website, not the Medicare website. So the Medicare website gives you information about what is covered under Medicare and how you can make claims under Medicare Part B, but to get in a row, you have to go to the Social Security office. So again, very important to sign up for both for Part A and Part B as soon as you turn age 65. However, uh, Part A covers hospital and nursing facilities and Part B covers uh, doctor's visit. Uh, however, that doesn't include prescription drugs. So um, as we know, prescription drugs in the U.S. is quite expensive. In order to get insurance coverage for prescription drug, you have to sign up uh, for Part B of Medicare. And this is where it can get confusing because of all these different parts and the different parts covers uh, different things. So Part A is hospital. These are the major events. Um, part B is your ongoing health care, doctor's visit. And then Part D is your prescription drug. In place of Part A, B, and D, you can enroll in something called Medicare Advantage. Sometimes this is referred to as Part C, but more common is known as Medicare Advantage. It is an alternative to Part A, B, and D. Um, and is offered through private insurance companies. So uh, this is very important because with Medicare Part A and B, 
um, is run by the government. So the premium for Part B is paid to the government, and the government reimburses the uh, doctors. Um, through the Medicare office, whereas Medicare Advantage is not run by the government. This is a private insurance. Uh, how that work is that the insurance company actually gets the premium that you pay, that gets a premium by the government. So when you enroll in Medicare Advantage, the government pays your premium to Medicare Advantage. Oftentimes, the additional premium is zero to the uh, individual. Uh, in addition to that, you can also get, instead of Medicare Advantage, you can do Medicare Part A, B, and D. So for your major hospital coverage, for your ongoing doctor visit, and for um, medication and prescription, uh, you can get additional supplemental insurance. So those are called Medigap. So it's basically to cover any additional medical expenses uh, not covered by Medicare. So that may include dental um, insurance, that may include uh, vision insurance, um, and um, any other uh, potential costs as well. Medicare Part A, B, D, that sounds a lot of different letters, and it can be conf confusing, particularly to senior citizens uh, over the age of 65. Uh, Medicare Advantage um, is a private product developed by a private insurance company and is intended to or is sold as a one-stop policy for seniors, so they don't have to worry about having plus A, B, D, plus Medigap to to um, cover other things. So a lot of them include ad additional coverage such as vision and dental. So it sounded really, really good on paper. However, recently there were concern about the actual coverage and also the reimbursement process by Medicare Advantage providers. Um, most Medicare Advantage plans were sold with low to zero premium. So the way this works is the, in, the individual pay the same premium into Medicare Part B and, um, and Part D. So they pay the same they did, but then they get this expanded coverage um, for vision and dental. Uh, however, the experience of most consumer as of today is that Medicare Advantage works really well when you are healthy. So uh, it's similar to the private insurance plan when you have a low deductible um, and you have a low premium, when you have a high deductible and low premium, that works well when you are healthy. Um, unfortunately, uh, they have uh, co-pays and deductibles that is not obvious until you have to use um, the services. So when a patient gets sick, they find out that they have co-pays co um, and they also have very limited choice of providers. So if you use an out-of-network provider uh, that is not part of the Medical Advantage plan, uh, you can end up with uh, very high copays and deductibles. And that, uh, and that is a surprise that seniors probably uh, are not aware of. Um, and also, um, because it is a private insurance, they can deny coverage, uh, unlike Medicare, where Again, there is pros and cons. You do need approval. You do need to make sure that Medicare approves your your um, your service. But then once it's approved, then you will be covered. In addition to Medicare, another uh, public um, insurance is Medicaid. Medicaid is an income-based um, insurance subsidy by the U.S. government. So this is available to anyone who is over the age of 65 below a certain income level or someone who is disabled or um, young children um, that, again, is based on financial need. So the, and this is an interesting thing about Medicaid. Uh, it, there is a federal minimum. So if you miss the federal guideline, you will qualify for Medicaid. But then there's also state-by-state -state variations. Some states have expanded Medicaid, which will provide health insurance um, that is similar to, health, to Medicaid, 
but they have a more expanded coverage. So even if you if you happen to live in a state that has expanded Medicaid, then you may not meet the federal minimum, but if you meet your state minimum, you will still qualify for Medicaid insurance coverage. And so again, state by state is important to keep that in mind. How do you incorporate health insurance into your personal financial plan? Uh, first of all, you should include insurance expenses in your budget. Uh, for most of us who uh, whose employers uh, provide health care uh, health insurance, uh, your health in health insurance premiums are typically deducted from your paycheck. Uh, but you should also budget for um, any copay uh, and particularly plan procedures, uh, dental health. Uh, most uh, You may have dental insurance with your company, but those are typically limited. So make sure you plan for that. Uh, another way to use emergency fund is make sure that it can cover your maximum out of pocket expenses. So that way you don't have surprises. So even if something really, really bad happened, uh, that's typically when we talk about insurance, um, you have health care insurance and you have emergency fund that will cover the maximum out of pocket. Then way you are, uh, even though you're dealing with health related stressful situation, you are not, um, your financial planning will help relieve your financial stress. You want to, um, when you choose a plan, pay special attention to reimbursement uh, and limits. And this is particularly true, uh, not just for private health insurance, but also if you decide to go with a Medicare Advantage in lieu of the traditional Medicare plans. Uh, the reason why medical insurance is really important is because medical debt is the number one reason for personal bankruptcy. So having a good health insurance policy will help avoid those uh, financial downfalls. Another way you can help with insurance uh, health care cost planning is to have a flexible spending account. Uh, this is, uh, but be careful, this is useful because uh, you can re reduce your uh, taxable income. You can use pre-tax income to pay for health care expenses. Uh, for a flexible health spending plan, be careful, you cannot carry it from year to year. So you either use it or lose it. Um, it is, you can use it for copay, you can use it for prescription. Uh, this is particularly useful if you have a family with children um, and if you are elderly, um, not over 65, but let's say you're over age 50 and you have ongoing medication or ongoing health problems, then an a F FSA is very useful. Uh, alternatively, you can you create a health savings account. A uh, health savings account uh, enables you to, you to use earnings that are tax-free. So, so this can be in combination with your personal financial plan. Uh, so let's say you have, uh, when you reach a, your, you open an HSA, a health savings account, and you let your earnings accumulate tax-free, and then when you're over age 65 or even later on, whenever you need to um, for healthcare expenses, you can take money out of the HSA to pay for medical expenses and the earnings accumulate tax-free. We oftentimes in talking about health is that we say an ounce of pre prevention is the most, uh, the highest return on your investment. So in summary, what can you do to reduce your overall personal healthcare costs? Uh, so consider a flexible spending account or a health savings plan. Um, if you are healthy, you can go with a higher deductible. Uh, when you fill your prescription, you can ask for generic versus a name brand prescription. Um, you can use mail order uh, pharmacy, which typically will give you a longer prescription time and a lower cost. Uh, you can look up pharmacy assistant program. Uh, surprisingly, pharmacy company um, oftentimes also have coupons and trial program that you can sign up for. Um, when you go to a doctor, check to see whether or not a follow-up visit is really necessary. 
Uh, this part is probably the most important is to review the statement uh, for any billing errors. That is not uncommon at all. In fact, unfortunately, this is very common, uh, particularly the difference between an in-network versus out-of-network service. So you may have called your doctor, uh, your insurance company before going to the doctor and they say that, yes, this doctor is in-network. And then when you get the bill, you saw that some of the lab tests were built as out of network, uh, even though they were performed at the doctor's office. So those are things that you need to pay attention to. And so when you're at the doctor's office, you want to emphasize that, can you make sure that all my lab work, all the work I can done here is approved by my insurance. Uh, and then uh, if the insurance make a different um, decision, then you need to appeal that and make sure that you you uh, you need to follow up. It is unfortunate, but it is important because those billing errors can add up. They can be hundreds or thousands of dollars of dollars. If you your decision, if your health insurance company decline your your claim, there is way to appeal for that. So again, um, you are not you do not have to fight them alone. And then you can do things on your own. These are just common practices. Uh, so this is, um, we all know this. So it's just a matter of doing the right thing. You know, get a balanced diet, exercise, keep your weight within the healthy range, um, avoid smoking, drinking too much, make sure that you are rested, get enough sleep, exercise, uh, be careful around the house. We talk about that. Don't drive when you're too tired. Uh, be practice um, with caution within your home. So insurance is all about prevention and risk mitigation. We will stop the video here. In the next video, we're going to continue with the last part of insurance, which is uh, long-term care, disability, and life insurance. See you soon.